Hello everyone, I received a question on the channel regarding how we can take a random sample from a table. Actually, I like the idea and I tried a solution. I think it's working and I'd like to share it with you in today's video. The solution is based on a custom function and the good thing about this solution that you can take it everywhere. You can take the same function and use it on any table, any size of data, any number of columns and any kind of data. As usual, below the video you'll find two files. The first one is the start file and also the finished file. Inside the finished file you can see the function, you can just take it and use it everywhere. However, if you want to see how we build this solution, please follow this video till the end. Let's go. The objective is to create a custom function that can take a random sample from any table. At the beginning, I need to create a query on a specific table. Then I'm going to generalize it inside a custom function in order to use it everywhere. In this Excel workbook, I have two tables. First one called staff. It contains the data for the staff and it is relatively small, only 80 lines of data. I'm not interested in the number of columns or even the content of the table itself because at the end, the function will be working on any table. I have also another table containing the sales data and this table is relatively bigger than the first one. It contains around 30,000 rows of data. I'm going to start by just creating a query that can take a sample file from the staff and then I'm going to try to apply it on the sales data and see if it will work or not. At the beginning, I need to just send this table into Power Query, which I already did. Remember that the objective is to take a sample from this table, sample of the rows. So you can see that I have all the rows numbered. You can see numbers from 1 up to 80. However, in reality, these numbers, if I want to reference any of these rows, I need to start from 0 up to 79. So if I manage to get a list of random numbers, these numbers between 0 and 79, I can use this list to reference the rows, the equivalent rows from this table, and this will be nothing but my sample. In order to do so, I'm going to start from a blank query. So I'm going to the empty white space, right click and new query, and then from other sources and blank query. I need to create a list and the size of the list will be my sample size. I have a small table, so I'm going to just select only five rows. So I need my sample size to be only five. So at the beginning, I'm going to just create a list of only five numbers. And these numbers at the beginning will be only a sequential numbers, not a random numbers. I'm going to start by sequential numbers and then we're going to see how we can make it random numbers. In order to do so, I'm going to start from the formula bar by just typing equal and open curly bracket and then one and then double dot and five. If I click the check mark, you will see that I have a sequential number in a list from one to five. The second step is to just try to get it randomized. In order to do so, I need to transform inside this list. I'm going to use a function called list.transform. So I'm going to create a new step using the fx. And then I'm going to start by just changing inside this list. In order to do so, before the source, source is nothing but the previous step, I'm going to type list.transform. Let's look at the screen tip and see what exactly required for this function. The very first requirement is list as a list, which is nothing but the source, the reference to the previous step, and then comma, the second requirement is transform as a function. If you want to work on an item by item inside a list, you need to use the keyword each. So I'm going to type each, and then I need to change each and every value inside this list. In order to do so, I'm going to use the shortcut underscore, the underscore is representing any value inside each and every item of the list. At the beginning, I need to get rid of these numbers from one to five. I need all these numbers to be zero. So I'm going to use the minus sign and then I'm going to use one more time the underscore, meaning that I'm telling Power Query, please go each and every line and check if you have one, just subtract one. If you have two, subtract two and so on and so forth. And at the end, I'll find a list of five zeros. Let's try together. I'm going to close the bracket and hit the check mark. And here you go. I have a list of five zeros. Now I can add my random numbers to these zeros and I will get exactly what I want. In order to do so, I'm going to edit again and I'm going to use the plus sign and I'm going to use the function called between. This function is just creating a random numbers between two limits, the upper limit and the lower limit. And this is exactly what we need. So because we need 
these numbers to be a reference to the rows inside the original table, the bottom or the lower limit will be zero. And then comma, and logically the top or the upper limit will be the count of rows of the table that we want to take the sample from, which is basically in our case, the stuff. So I can just count the rows of the stuff table by just using the function called table.rowCount. The row count of this table is 80, and don't forget that we need to subtract one. Why? Because I need a reference from zero up to 79 so I need to just subtract one from the upper limit and then hit the check mark and here you go you will have a list of random numbers between 0 and 79 if you want to just rerun or refresh this function you can go to home and whenever you refresh you will get also numbers between 0 and 79 the only catch here, you can see that the numbers is coming in decimal numbers. We have fractions and this will not help us to reference the lines that we need inside the stuff. In order to do so, I need to get rid of the fraction or to round up these numbers. In order to do so, I'm going back to the formula bar and before the number dot random between, I'm going to use the number dot round function. And if I ignore the second parameter, it will be rounding up to the nearest whole number. I can just now hit the check mark and here you go. I have my five numbers and the five numbers is between zero and 79 and all of them are whole numbers. Another point here, which is basically in some cases after the rounding, you may find duplications here. So in order to make sure that you don't have any duplication, I need to add another step. In this step, I'm going to get rid of any duplication, but at the beginning, let me give a meaningful name to the custom one function that we already created. Right click and rename and let me call it random list. Then I'm going to use the fx once more. This will create a new step. And in this step, I'm going to use the function called list.distinct. I still have the list of five numbers. However, if any duplication happened at the time of the rounding, this will get rid of the duplication. The only catch here, the size of the sample may be a little bit smaller than the number that you're expecting. That's why I'm saying you need to put the upper limit of the sample or the maximum size of the sample let me also change the name of this step now we have a random list of row numbers between 0 and 79 the only thing that we need to do is to try to grab these rows from the original table in order to do so i'm going to use the list to transform once more so i'm going to add a new step fx and i'm going to use again list to transform the first requirement list as a list coming from the previous step distinct list and then comma again i'm going to work on each and every item of the list so i'm going to use the keyword each and then i need to call the table staff so i'm going to type staff and then i need to specify some rows from this table so i'm going to use the curly bracket and inside the curly bracket i'm going to use the underscore and the underscore is the shortcut for each and every value of our list. Then I'm going to close the bracket for list to transform and hit the check mark. And here you go. I have list of records. If you check any of these records, it is nothing but my sample, but coming in a form of record. Let me give a meaningful name to this step. Right click and rename. I'm going to call it records and I'm going to add a new step FX. And finally, I'm going to convert this list of records to a table using a very simple function called table.fromRecords. Then I'm going to open a bracket. The only requirement is records as list. This is the only required argument. So I'm going to close the bracket at the end and hit the check mark. And here you go. I have my table of samples. Let me give a meaningful name to this query. Let me call it random sample. And also I'm going to rename my final step. Here is my sample, right click and rename. I'm going to call it sample. And you can check that I have a very valid sample of my table. If you want to change the sample, you just need to go to the home and just refresh. And you'll notice that the sample is changing. Sometimes it comes in four rows and sometimes it comes in five rows, no problem at all. At this stage, this query is working only for the table staff. If you want to generalize this and make it working for any table, you just need to convert it into a custom function. From the view tab, I'm going to select advanced editor. And on top of this let statement, I need to declare a variable in order to create a custom function. So I'm going to add one line on top of the let statement. And I'm going to declare this time two variables, not only one variable. The first variable will be the sample size. I need to replace this five by a variable. So anytime I run this query, I'm going to select the maximum size of the sample. So I'm going to open a bracket to declare the variable. First one will be 
a number and I'm going to call it sample size and then I'm going to specify the data type I'm going to type as number and then comma for the second variable the second variable will be nothing but the table so I'm going to call it any table and the type of the data will be table so I'm going to type as table and then after the brackets I'm going to add the equal sign and the greater than sign both together are the goes to symbol and now we need to change all the hard coded values into the new declared variables so this five need to be the sample size and we use the table stuff here so I'm going to replace it by the variable any table same for the fourth step I'm going to change the name of the table stuff into any table now I'm ready I'm just going to click on done and here you go the query converted into a function and you can use this function on any table and let's try together let's start by just trying this into the stuff table I'm going to the sample size here is my parameter or my variables I'm going to start by just typing 10 I need a sample size of 10 and the table I'm going to select from the drop down I have only one table which is basically the stuff and then invoke this will create a new query and you can see that I have a sample of 10 rows I can just change the name of the query to something like staff sample and let's try if this can work also on any different tables but I have only one table loaded into power query so I need to grab the other table I'm going to select the staff query right click and duplicate and from the source let me change the name of the table from staff to sales trx this is the name of the table and hit the check mark and also I need to change the change type step and the name of the query to sales and hit enter now we can try our random sample function on this table so I'm going to select the function once more this time I need a little bit bigger sample of 25 and the table this time will be the sales table and then invoke it is taking a little bit longer but here you go you have a 25 rows of a random sample of your sales table I can also change this to sales sample now I can load everything to Excel home close and load close and load to I'm going to start by just only create a connection and click on OK now we can load the first sample stuff sample right click and load to table existing worksheet h2 and click on OK here you go some quick formatting and if you want to change the sample you can just right click and refresh and the sample will be changed automatically if any data added to the original table and then you refresh the sample will be updated according to the new data let's try the other one this time sales sample right click and load to table existing worksheet and click on ok and here you go you have your 25 rows of sample if you want to change right click and refresh and the sample will be updated and it is working on any table regardless of the size of the table the number of the columns or the data itself you just need to specify the sample size and also to identify the table itself as I mentioned inside the solution file you will find the custom function that we built together you can just copy it and use it anywhere that was all for today if you like the video please like it and subscribe and leave me a comment and we'll catch you in next videos and bye